a very good day to all of you. Computer Shiksha is supported by. I expect that all of you remember all that had been taught to you in the earlier class. Today, you will get to learn something new. But before we do that, let us revise what you had learned earlier. Can you tell what all you have learned in the previous class? Till now, you have learned about the standard toolbar and the sub menus of the file, edit, and view menu of Impress. Within the standard toolbar, which all options have we learned about? Within the standard toolbar, you all have learned about the important options of new, save, open, export as PDF, etc. I will now ask you some questions which will help you revise the things that you have learned. Can you tell how you can hide and show the grid in your impress file? You can show and hide the grid option in two ways. In the first one, you can use the view menu and in the second one, you can use the toolbar option to show or hide the grid option. Why do we use the points? The points option in Impress is a very interesting option because with the use of this option, you can choose to apply points in any of your drawings as per your liking and can then use these to make your drawings look better. Can you tell why we use the fields option? Within the fields option of the edit menu, some predefined formats are available to you. You can use these to edit your fields option, meaning that you can change the format of these fields. Can you tell why we use the hyperlink option? Using the hyperlink, you can link any file you want to your impress file through a link on your file and then can open such files and even work on them while you are still using your impress file. Now, all of you switch on your computers and open your impress file. Let us first know what we are going to learn in today's class. In this class, you will learn about all the remaining options of the insert and format menus. You will learn about the options of insert for expand slide, summary slide, animated image, movie and sound, object and chart, and from the format menu, you will learn about options for position and size, line, area, text, crop picture, styles, file and formatting group. And then you will also learn about some of the options of the tools menu like spelling, language, color replacer, media player, etc. Since in today's class, you will get to learn about many options, you should first go ahead and type the paragraph being shown to you. Have you all finished typing the paragraph? Let us now learn about the remaining options of the insert menu. Let us first learn about the summary slide. Do you know why we use the summary slide? If you want to see the titles of all the slides that you are using in your impress file, then you will make use of the summary slide. The summary slide will show you all the titles being used on your slides in your file. Let us watch this video and learn how and why the summary slide is used. With the help of this video, let us see how we can use the summary slide in our impress presentation or impress file. As you know, the summary slide will provide us a summary of all the titles 
of the slides that we are using in our impress presentation. So for this, we already have one slide which has a paragraph written about internet. Let's select a new slide by right clicking on the slide pane, choosing the new slide option. And let's change this to a title slide. And let's add some title to this slide. So as a title, we are saying the title itself, we are calling it Smiley Face. So we have typed the title Smiley Face. If you want, you can change the format also of the title. A Smiley Face is what we have typed. Then in the text area, we want to insert a smiley face in this uh, slide. So we go to the drawing toolbar, select the smiley option and then drag a smiley face here as is being shown in the video. So now you have two slides in this. You can change the format if you like. We have changed the color of the smiley. Now you have two slides, the first one being a paragraph and the second one having a smiley face. Now, if you go to the menu bar and click on the insert option, within the insert option, you, you will see a summary slide. When you click on the summary slide, a new slide or a summary slide gets added at the end. As you can see here, click on this slide and what you see here is that the titles of all the slides that exist in your impress presentation are given on the summary slide. So this is how you can use the summary slide to see all the titles in one slide in the summary slide for your slide presentation, for your impress presentation. Can you tell what is expand slide and why is it used? The expand slide works with the summary slide. When you have a summary slide and want to see where and how the various titles appear on the actual slides, then you will use the expand slide. Let us watch the video and learn how the expand slide is used. Let us now watch this video and see how we can make use of the expand slide. By using the expand slide, whatever you had got in the summary slide will be shown as different slides. So for using the expand slide, go to the insert menu, click there and click on the expand slide. Now you can see that in your summary slide, there were two titles. So two different slides have been created with those two titles. In the third slide, you can see a title saying about internet and in the fourth slide, you can see a title saying a smiley face. So this is how you can use the expand slide to create new slides from the summary slide. The next option is of the animated image. Do you know why is the animated image option used? In Impress, the animated image option is another very interesting option. Using this, you can apply animation on any pictures or gallery images used on your slides. And when these are viewed, they will all appear animated. By animated image, we mean that an image shows the activities happening in that picture from time to time and gives them a realistic touch. So, when you view the animated picture, you see all those images in one go. Watch this video to see how animated image option is used. Let us watch this video and see how we can use the animated image option. So, to use the animated image option, we first go to the insert menu, click there, First, we go to animation. We select animation. A box opens. Next, we want to insert some pictures on our slide. So, we go to anim uh, insert, click on picture and click on the from file option. Now, from the picture, select one of the pictures. Click on open. This picture gets inserted on your slide. As you can see in the video. 
Next, in the animation box, which has opened earlier, apply object. As soon as you click on apply object, this picture is shown in the animation box. Next, select the picture again in the slide and delete that because we have to use animation on more than one picture. Go to insert, go to pictures, go to from file option, select the another picture. So, we have selected the desert, click on open. This picture also comes in the slide. Again, click on apply object in the animation box. Once again, from the slide, delete the picture which was there and go back to the insert menu, click on pictures option and from file and select another picture. We have selected the third picture, click on open. So, this picture also gets inserted on the slide. And then again, we click on apply object in the animation box. So, this way we are increasing the number of pictures. And when we use animation, one by one, all these pictures will be shown. Once again, delete the picture from the slide. Go to insert menu. Click there, click on picture and click on from file option. Select one more picture, another picture. Let us select the penguins. Click on open. This picture also appears on our slide. And then in the animation box, we click on apply object. So, so far we have selected four pictures. Let us delete this picture from the slide. Go to insert again. Select picture option and from file and select another picture. Let us take the jellyfish. Click on open. And this picture also gets applied on your slide. Once again, in the animation box, click on apply object. So, you now have five pictures on this slide. Click on create in the animation object. So, your animation is ready. You can close this box. Now, to see the animation which has been applied, you will not be able to see it in the normal view. You will have to see it in the slide view. So, for that, click on use F5 and you can see in the slideshow your pictures are coming. On the slide where these pictures are, click on it, use the down arrow and you can see all five slides appear one after the other. All the five pictures which you had inserted are shown like this. So, this will give you a realistic animation view. This is how you will use the animation option in your impress presentation. The next option is of movie and sound. With the use of this on your impress slide, you can play a movie or a song and you can also edit it in a file. Then you can play any of the edited versions of these files on your current impress slide. Get more information about this option by watching this video. Let us now watch this video and see how we can use the movie and sound option using which on your impress file or your or your slide during the slide presentation you can play or use any movie or sound or song to do that you have to go to the insert menu click on that and click on the movie and sound option and then you have to select this file which you want to, which is a multimedia file or a movie or a sound song. So, like this, here we have in the videos location, we have a video on wildlife. So, we can select that, click on open, and you will see that this video gets inserted on your slide. So, similarly, you can insert 
any multimedia files or movie or sound or song on your impressed slides. If you want to play this during your presentation, you can see there is a small menu bar for this multimedia file which is appearing just above the drawing toolbar. And you can click on the play button here and your video starts playing. You can see in the video here that it starts playing. If you want, there are other options available in that menu, which is for pause. Or if you want to stop, you can use stop button. You can also use the repeat if you want to repeat it. And then there is also a button for mute. If you want to add another multimedia file here, you can do so by using the first option in that menu bar, which is on the extreme left. So you can add another multimedia file in your presentation from the location that you know. So in this way, you can use the movie and sound option to add multimedia videos, sounds, movies, songs in your impressed file. Can you tell why we use the object option? The object option has some predefined options uploaded within it. Whenever you want to see a file, picture or any clip art as an object, then you will use the object option. Some examples of this are OLE object, plugin, formula, which are all different options for objects. Here, OLE stands for Object Linked Embedding, which allows you to use it as an object on your current sheet. Let us watch this video and learn how we can use this option to insert these objects in our document. Let us watch this video now and see how we can insert different kinds of objects on our slides. So select the slide where you want to insert objects. We have selected the third slide. Now to insert the object, go to the insert menu, click there, come to the objects option and in this click on the OLE object option. Once you click on the OLE object option, a box opens which is for insert OLE object. So there are various options here to insert a spreadsheet, a chart, drawing, formulas or text. So if you want to insert a spreadsheet on our slide, we select the spreadsheet option, click on OK and you can see that the spreadsheet, a small spreadsheet gets inserted on our slide. Now we can do all the functions that we do in a normal spreadsheet on this small spreadsheet also. Like we are inserting some numbers. So you can use the spreadsheet as you normally would use a spreadsheet. Now if you click after inserting the numbers, if you click on the side of the spreadsheet on the slide, the spreadsheet will not be visible. Only the numbers that you have just inserted will be visible as you can see. If you click on them, they get selected and if you do a double click, the spreadsheet comes back as is being shown in the video. You can delete them by selecting it and using the delete button. Now if you want to insert another object, we can do so. We have other options in the op insert object. You can actually select and use copy. Uh, or cut and cut also on these objects. Let's try this once more. Go to insert, go to objects, click on OLE objects and then click on further objects. Click on OK and you can see a box opens which gives you options for other objects. You can create new or create from a file. We select that 
and click on browse and we can pick on any of the pictures of our choice we select one of these pictures click on open and you can see the link appears here if you click on ok in the insert object box your object which you had selected will get inserted on your slide you can see if you click on that it opens the picture opens or you can just move it and use it wherever you want on the slide if you click it once it gets selected if you double click the picture opens so this is how you can use the object option to insert different objects on your slide in the impress file now you all will learn about the remaining options of the format menu first of all you will get to know about position and size option using this option you can increase the size of the object inserted in your impress slide you can also use this option to move an object from one place to another rotate it and if you like using the line tool you can use the point option in it let us watch this video to learn about how the position and size option is used let us now watch this video and see how we can make use of the position and size option so for this we need to first select a, an image so let's select a new slide and draw an object there so to select a new slide right click on the slide pane click on new slide you have a new slide which is a blank slide go to the drawing toolbar let's select the triangle option and after selecting we can drag a triangle here like this and since we are going to be making some changes on this triangle in, in respect to position and size, just to be able to see what the changes are, we have made a copy of the same triangle on the same slide by using cut and uh, copy and paste option. So after having done this, let's select this image and then go to format Mino in the Mino bar, select position and size. The first option here is for the position relative to the x axis and the y axis so you can use the up arrow or the down arrow to increase the position relative to the x axis and the y axis as is being shown here we are increasing the position size click on ok and you can see that the position has slightly moved down from where it was originally once again go to format Go to position and size and these are the base points. So you can give a reference with respect to which you want to move the position of your selected object or image. So once again, we are doing position X and Y, we are changing it. The other option is for size. So you can change the width and the height of your image also. Again, there is a base point given. So you can select the base point with reference to which you want to increase the height or the width which is what we have done here click on ok and you see the change gets applied on our image so you can see the width has increased because we had increased the width in that box once again let's go to format go to position and size and you can see in the third thing here is for protection. So if you tick mark or select the position or select the size and after you have selected, it gets protected, which means that then you can't change the position or the size. Next option is rotation. So if you go to the rotation option, again, you can with respect to the axis X and axis Y, you can change the rotation of this. However, this has not been applied. Remember, because we had protected the position. 
So once again, we go to format, go to position and size. And now you can see because it's all protected, these options are not available to you. You cannot change the position because it had been protected. Even if we try the position and size option, you can see it was protected. So it was not being able to use the rotate option. So we have to close this box. And once again, let's try opening the position and size for this object. We have select, deselected it, selected it again. Go to position and size, but you still see that this cannot be applied because it has already been saved as a protected position. So let's select the other image and apply these rotation changes on this. Go to format, go to position and size. Now you can see that you can apply rotation. So you can, and also you can give the rotation angle. So you can increase or decrease that, which is what we are doing here in the video. Click on OK and you can see this object that we had selected has got rotated. So this is how you will be using the position and size option for making changes on your images in the impress slides. Once again, we are going to format. We select the position and size option. Let's see the other option here, which is for slant and corner rotation. So you can again define the angles for corner rotation or the slant. You can slant the object. So you can, when you click on OK, you can see that the object gets slanted, but it also changes in size because it's in a slanting position now. This is how you can use the various available options for position and size for your images on the impress slides in your impress file. The next option is of the line. With the use of this option, you can change the line or pictures format that you may have dragged. You can use this in three ways, which are line, line styles or line arrow styles. You can customize these as per your choice. Learn by watching the video why the use of line option is so important. Let us watch this video now and see how we can use the line option and options for adding arrows and line sizes, etc. So, for that, we first need to have a line. So, we we'll go to the line tool, get a line on the slide by dragging a line as is being shown in the video. Now we want to format on this line. We want to apply arrows, maybe change the style of the line. So for that, you need to take your pointer to the format option. Mino, format Mino. Click there. And click on line. As soon as you click on the line, a box opens which is for line, different options in line. The line tag itself has been selected here. By default, you can change the style of the line by clicking on the down arrow and choosing the line style that you want. You can change the color of the line. Click on this down button and choose the color that you want on the line. Again, you can increase or decrease the width of the line from the up arrow or the down arrow, as you can see, and you can see it in the preview also, how the change will look. With the transparency buttons, the up, up arrow and the down arrow, you can change the transparency or you can show how much of that color you want to show. On the other side are the arrow styles. You can select the arrow style that you want to apply. The left side is for the left arrow and the right side would be for the right arrow. So you can select those. You can change the width of the arrow. You can increase it. You can decrease it. You can have it 
we are doing it for the left and the right and you can center it if you want or you can use synchronize the ends and then there is an option for corner and cap styles the types of caps that you want to use or the corners you want to use the cap styles can be flat round whichever you want to apply when you click on OK, all these options will get applied. The next option is shadow. So on the line, you can apply a shadow. You can define the position where you want the shadow to appear. You can define the distance. You can change the color of the shadow. And again, with transparency, you can show it dark or light in color respect in with respect to the transparency the next option is for line style here you can change the line style or you can actually define a new line style of your own by changing the number of dashes that you want the number of dots that you want what should be the length of the dots, what should be the length of the da dashes, all these things you can define. And uh, if you want to add that, you will click on the add option. The other option, the last option is for arrow styles. You will see that in the video. Here we are just showing you dots and dashes, you can make changes according to this is for the line style once you select the line style you can give a name and add that line style and then this line style will also be available for you whenever you use so here you can give a name click on ok and that line style gets added next is arrow styles again this is to modify the arrow styles itself so you can choose the arrow style that you want to use and click on OK and you can see that the changes that you had made, the format changes that you had made on the line get applied here. You can see this by in a bigger view by running the slideshow using F5. You can see all the changes here. You can even see the dashes and dots, the transparency, the color change and the arrowheads. This is how you will use the line option. Now you will learn about area. Can you tell how and why is the area option used? With the help of this option, you can change the formatting within your drawing or object as per your need. There are many options within this which help you better present your slide. Watch the video and get to know more about how the area option is used. Let us watch this video now and see how we can make use of the area option. So with the area option, we can define the colors of any image on our slide. So we have selected a slide which has the smiley face. Select the image itself to apply the area options, go to format, click on that and click on the area option. When you click on the area option, a box opens. The first tab is for area, which you can fill. You can define what you want to fill. the. You want to fill it with color or bitmap, etc. And then there are various options that you can use in terms of the color available. The next option is shadow. So you click on use shadow and then you can define the position where you want the shadow to appear. You can define the distance from the image that you want the shadow to appear, the color in the shadow that you want. And you can then also define the transparency, how much bright the shadow should be. Again, there is another tab for transparency. So you can either, by default, it is new transparency. If you select transparency, you can increase or decrease the transparency. You can see the change happening in the preview window. You can also 
look for another option called gradient. So you can apply a different type of gradient on in the shadow. You can have linear or and then you can also define the position. The gradient should be in the center of X on the horizontal line or from the center on the vertical lines, which is center Y. And you can also define the angle. You can see this in the preview window as we are changing. The gradient is also changing. You can see, you can change the border, what, what kind of, from the borders, how far it should be. And then start value and end value can also be given. Then the colors, you can define new colors also if you want. And you can, by clicking on the add button here, you can define your own colors also and modify these colors also. So you can give it a new name if you like. For instance, we are giving CS sky blue and we can click on add to add this color. You can define the RJB, the red, green and blue content, what kind of, what percentage it should be. Click on add and we have given a name. Next is gradients. So besides the gradients which are already available, you can also change the gradient of to your liking. For instance, here we have selected the type to be space gradient. Again, you can modify and then if you click on add, it will allow you to give it a name. So you can give it a name. Also in the hatching and bitmap, you can do the same thing. You can modify the hatching available. You can define your own like the spacing we are changing. You can see the effect taking place in the preview window. You can choose the color, line color, line type. You can choose the angle, whether it should be at, at an angle from the horizontal or from the vertical. And again, you can click on the add button or modify button and add additional hatching options. These will be available in your line and filling toolbar. You can save this when you have finalized it. You can save it by clicking on the save button here and it allows you to save it wherever you want. You can save it. If the name already exists, you can change the name. So we have typed standard 11. We have clicked on add and we've given it some new name like hatching or we have given it CSS and click and you can see that this hatching pattern has been added. Similarly, when you go to bitmap, you can define another new bitmap option or a design that you would like to use repeatedly. So when you choose this mid-map, you are creating a new mid-map. Bit map. You can change the foreground color. You can change the background color. <clears throat> As is being shown in the video, we are looking at the foreground color right now. And then we are looking at the background color. So we are changing the background color also. Once again, once you are satisfied with the type of bitmap you have created, you can use the save buttons. You can use the add button and then this bitmap will appear in the line and filling toolbar. So here, when we click on add, it gives you an option to give it a name. So we give it CS12. Clicked on OK. So CS12 gets added in the bitmap options. So once you click on OK, it gets applied on the image on your slide. And just to see 
that this is available now in the line and filling toolbar. You can click on the line and filling toolbar options and see that whatever options you had applied or changed or added are available. So if you go to hatching, you can see in the different styles of hatching, when you click on the drop down window, drop down button, CSS is available. If you click on, if you click on that, it gets applied to your image. Similarly, if you look in bitmap, click on the drop down button, CS12 is available. Click on that and it gets applied to your image. So this is how you can use the area option and make different bitmapping, hatching, different kinds of styles of your own choice you can use and use on your slides in the impress file. Can you say what happens with the text option? With the use of the text option, you can change the width, height, spacing and other things of the text of your object. You can even use this option to animate your text. Watch this video to learn how the text option is used. Let us now watch this video and see how we can use the text option on our slides. So for this, we first need to select a slide and the text in it. So we have selected this particular slide and we have selected the title text about internet. Take your pointer to the format option, format menu, click there and then click on the text option. Once you click on the text option, let's click on the text tab and then you can select the fit width to text and fit width height to text. Both of them we can select and there are options for spacing to borders. You can select those. Then you can do text animation. When you go to text animation, there are various effects and you can apply that effect. We have selected the blinking effect and you can see that has been applied to the text that you had selected. Select the text again, go to format, go to text option. Let's try the other effects in text animation. Click on the drop down button and let's click on scroll through. There is an option called scroll through and we select the direction that we want the scroll through to happen. You can also select start inside. You can select the text visible when exiting and you can define a con animation cycle whether it should be continuous or you can give a time here. One second, two second, the cycle and increment in pixels, delay. You can define whether it should be an automatic delay or you can give timing here for the delay to happen while it is scrolling through. Click on OK. And you can see that your text is now scrolling down as you had selected. So these, this is how you will use the different effects. Let's try another option, another effect. We select the text, go back to format, you know, select the text option. And now in the effects, let's select scroll back and forth. So when we select scroll back and forth, and we select towards the right, click on OK, and you can see that your text is scrolling from left to right. Once again, select this text, go to Format menu, choose the text option, and let's also use another option here. So you see, now we have said scroll in. And we are saying towards the left. Click on OK. You That effect has been applied, but you can't really see it because the text is taking all the space available in the title bar. So let's try another towards the right. Scroll in towards the right. 
again this may not be visible it's not visible because the text is taking uh, all the space available but this is how you can apply the various effects of animation to the selected text so this is how you can use the text option to apply animation and see different options available why is the crop picture option used using the crop picture option you can crop or cut out the portions from your drawing that you do not want to show. Watch the video to understand how the crop picture option is used. This video shows us how we can use the crop picture option. We can crop a picture in our slide using this option or cut the picture to a size that we want. Let us first select one of the pictures in the impress presentation. So we've selected this fourth slide. Click on that and select this image or the picture by clicking left clicking on it so that we can apply changes to it. So once we have selected, go to the format menu, click there and then click on the crop picture option. A box opens for crop picture and you have keep the scale or keep, keep the image size and you can define the image size. So when you define the image size by left, how much from the left you want, you can see in the preview window, it is being cut that much from the left side. Similarly, from the right side, we have cut a little bit from top you can increase or decrease the size and from the bottom also you can we will see the other options later let's click on ok just to see what effect it has taken on our slide so you can see from the top from the right from the left and from the bottom this picture has been cropped or cut once again we go to format crop picture now let's use the scale or the image size. Image size, we can increase the width or the height of the image by clicking on the up arrow or the down arrow. This is what we are doing in the video. You can see the effect taking place in the preview window. Click on OK and you can see the change has been applied to your image. Once again, let's go to format menu. Click on crop picture. And this time let's use the scale. Scale is something like zoom, which can magnify your image or decrease it. So width and height we have changed. Click on OK and you can see that your image is magnified and is shown in a bigger scale. So this way you can use the crop picture option. If you go back to format again, click on crop picture. And if you want the original picture, you just click on the original size button and you can see your picture coming back to the original size. Click on OK and whatever the original image was is brought back into your slide. So this is how you can use the crop picture option to vary the image, to cut it and to crop the picture as per your liking and as per your requirement. The next option is for style and formatting. With the use of this option, you can change the style of your text or object into different styles of your liking. Watch this video to know more about this option. Let us watch this video and see how we can apply the various styles and formatting to our slides. Most of these styles and formatting are predefined, but we can also modify them to apply on our slides. We have selected the first slide and then go to format option. Take your cursor to the format menu, click there, and then select the styles and formatting option. When you select this, a box opens and there are different types of styles and formatting available. Let's click on background and then also click on the modify button. We want to modify the background available. So here 
you can see color gradient bitmap hatching different options are available we have selected bitmap and you can choose one of the bitmaps that you like and you can apply that or go to hatching and select we have selected css click on ok and this hatching gets applied on all your all your slides in the impress file once again let's look at other slides we have, we've got the smiley face and in this when we look at the style and formatting options we have selected without fill so you can see that the smiley face there's no fill there then we are selecting another option and we selected the one with arrow so the line which was the smile has an arrow on it similarly if we select one of the other styles and formatting we can select the object with shadow and we can apply a shadow on it or next one we have selected and we have selected to modify that style objects without fill and we have selected bitmap we select one of our choices the roses we click on ok in this and then we select the object with shadow and with fill with, and you can see that the roses the design has been applied inside the smiley so this way you can keep changing the styles and format in fact you can apply the styles and format available now we have selected the text of the first slide the contents and we select outline one or outline two and you can see the different changes we can select outline 3 and click on modify here we can give how much space you want to use from the left side how much space you want to use from the right side from the top from the bottom click on ok and you can see that there is spacing applied from the right and the left so there are various options available and you can try and use all of them with for your styles and formatting on the slides of your impress file let us now get to know more about some of the options of the tools menu the first option of the tools menu is that of spelling with the use of the spelling option you can correct any mistakes you may have made while typing words lines or paragraphs on your impress slides you can use the shortcut command also for this by using the command F7. Can you tell what is color replacer? With the color replacer option, you can pick a color from your picture and replace it with another color of your choice. Watch the video to see how this is done. With the help of this video, let us now see what and how we can use the color replacer option of the tools menu with the color replacer you can replace any color of an image on your impress file slides on the impress slides so let's select this fourth slide which has a very colorful image now in this we want to replace a specific a particular color for instance if you want to replace this darkish color in the background we will use the color replacer option so go to the tools menu in the menu bar and select color replacer a box opens and you can see a dropper kind of thing which is the it's also called a pipette select the pipette and then click on the color that you want to replace here we have clicked on the dark color and you can see that in the first box here a color has come now we want to replace with so we select from this drop down window a color that we want to replace with click on replace and you can see that the dark color has been replaced with the color of our choice once again 
if we want to select a different color, the bluish, the dark bluish color, we select the picket again and click on the color that we want to replace. Let's select the second box here so that we replace it in the second place. So we select this color here and then again go and drop, use the drop down window of the second window a box and select a color. Let's select the greenish color here. <coughs> Click on replace and you can see that the color there gets replaced with the greenish color. So this is how you can use the replace option to replace any colors and you can use from the tools the color replacer option on your slides images in impress file. Let us now learn about the media player. The media player allows you to play any video or mp3 file lying at any location on your computer in your impress file. Let us now watch this video and know how the media player option is to be used. Let us watch this video and see how we can make use of the media player option. As you know, using the media player option, you can insert any media, a video file or a song, mp3, mp4 file on your slides on the impress file. To do so, you have to go to the tools menu, select the media player option, a box opens and you can using this box, we don't need the gallery, so we'll just close that. So using the media player option, now you can, you have a button here for open. Click on that and it opens the locations on your computer. You should know where your file is. So we have it in videos. We click there. We open that and we click on open. So this video gets inserted and if we click on play, it starts playing also so that you can see what this file is. If you want, you can use the pause button or even the stop button and a repeat button here. If you click on apply, this video gets applied on your slide itself. As you can see in the video here, that video has been applied on your slide. You have to click on the apply button to apply this video. If you want to use another media, a video or an mp3, mp4 file, you can again click on the open button here, go back to where your media is. For instance, let's look at videos now. And in videos, we have some recordings. We'll click there and we, we want to click and open this. So now this file is being opened. And you will see this here. As soon as it gets open, now you can see it and it's when you play it, you can see that the recording file gets played. Again, you can use all the buttons here. And if you click on apply, it will apply on your slide. There is also a mute button. Of course, there is the pause, the stop button and the repeat button. And there is also a mute button if you don't want to have the volume you can click on mute. So this is how you can use the media player option to insert media on your impress slide. Do you know why we use the minimize presentation option? By using this, you can reduce the size of your presentation file. You can also use it to compress your images and see the summary of your impress presentation. Let us watch this video to see how this option is used. Let us watch this video and see what happens with the use of the minimize presentation option. With the minimize presentation option, you can get your presentation in a smaller size and you can also get a duplicate of your presentation 
in a compressed manner. So for using this, go to the tools menu and select the minimize presentation option. As you can see in the video, once we select that, a box opens and it just tells you what this can do. Go to the next option here. Here you can delete any master pages that you have and you can also delete any hidden slides that you have so that your presentation gets compressed or comes in a lower size, lesser size. Go to the next. Here it allows you to compress your file, lossless compression, which means that you will not lose any resolution or you also have you have choices here to reduce the image resolution and JPEG compression also. Go to next. <clears throat> the OLE objects we learn later. So we have gone to the summary. You can see the summary and click on finish. And now it will allow you to save this new file, the compressed file by a name of your choice. So we have typed the file name, click on save, and you can see that the file is being created. A compressed presentation of your presentation is being created. And as soon as that gets created, that presentation will open. So you click on OK, and you will see on the in the title bar, this is the compressed file again. This is a duplicate of your presentation with the compression as you had asked for. So this way you can use the minimize presentation option from the tools menu. Since today's class ends here, all of you close your impress file and then properly shut down your computer. In this class today, you learned about all the remaining options of the insert and format menus. You learned about the options of insert for expand slide, summary slide, animated image, movie and sound, object and chart. And from the format menu, you learned about the options for position and size, line, area, text, crop picture, styles, and the formatting group. And then you also learned about some of the options of the tools menu like spelling, color replacer, media player, etc. Computer Shiksha is supported by. Thank you.